well as the two uh, overnight trips that hopefully you all are here for to learn about with uh, Best of Times. We have the Nashville Country Christmas. We also have the uh, trip uh, cruise to Bermuda with the um, Sicilian, tenors. Sicilian tenors who I've seen in person with Best of Times. They are fantastic. So um, with that, I hope you guys all enjoy the presentation from Best of Times. They'll be able to answer any questions you guys may have on their trips coming up. So with that, I'll leave it to them. All right, thank, thank you. you very much, Dave. Okay. I'm applauding him, it was great. He said he was doing a great job, I gotta give him yeah. credit. Uh, so I am Kevin Kalevi from Best of Times Travel. This is Kevin Treat from Best of Times Travel. Just remember, Kevin, yell it if you have a question, one of us will answer. Um, Best of Times Travel, as a company, we've been around since 1971, uh, so 48 years, long history. Um, we are a tour company, not a bus company, so we can do stuff with places like Exeter that has their own shuttles, um, be very flexible, be very independent, uh, and are not reliant on all of our trips, always filling a bus, we can cater to you. Um, and mainly with the historic history of Best of Times Travel, he's catered to a market that has an age range similar to the ones in front of me. Um, we cater a lot to you know the 55 and up community. We are happy to do trips with schools as well, um, but mainly we focus on providing trips for seniors, retirees, experienced travelers is what I like to say. Uh, and we have some very experienced travelers who actually have been on trips like this today. So we're gonna get into very quickly, go over some of the day trips that we're offering, just give you brief details about them. A lot of them are really short trips, and then we'll go more in detail, uh, as David said, about the trips to Nashville and of course to Boston and Bermuda. So very quickly. Coming up first, next month, the first one that's going to be on our list, it's behind me. There we go. Uh, that's next week. So if you've signed up, Atlantic City Boys is coming up next week. Um, of course, songs of the Atlantic City um, variety. Uh, and that one's next week. So if you haven't signed up for that one in Castle, then that one is definitely one to watch. Is that uh, kind of like the Jersey Boys? Exactly. Kind of thing? Kind of, yeah. Exactly. Exactly what it is. It's Jersey Boys. Um, four young singers, extremely talented. Justin Wyndham, so not too far away at all. And yeah. that one is coming up next week. Um, the one that I'm excited about because I just uh, started researching. Uh, so I just started with Best of Times and became a Tim Nutter just a few weeks ago. Um, and this coming up in May, I'm excited about because it's comedy, and after the past two years, we could all use some laughter. Um, and this um, entertainer, Richard Barker, he really is a celebrity hypnotist. He's been on the Today Show, the Tonight Show, Good Morning America. He, I've seen him put Al Roker to sleep and wake, <laughs> wake him up and make him coo like a bird. Um, he's really fantastic, really funny. That's going to be a super fun show. And again, just up the road in Wyndham, really good time. I'm excited to see who he picks on in the crowd. Um, coming up in May, we're going to have a Chicago tribute band. Anybody like the music of the band Chicago? I see one person nodding. Well, I did. It's my father's favorite band. Um, so we, when we get tribute acts, um, we as a company always try and hire the best that there is. Um, so in the country, there's, you know, 100, 150 Elvis performers, right? You don't want to pick one who's just playing on the corner every day. So we really try and find the cream of the cream uh, acts to present and bring forth to you. And for the Chicago tribute band that we bring in in May, and this will be in Danvers Court. It's definitely going to be a great time. Rock and roll music, fun, energetic, and again, getting us out of this bubble we've all been living in for the past two years and getting out and having some fun. Do you have any pre rock and roll? <laughs> pre rock and roll? Well, we have the er one of the earliest guys of the rock and roll era. Uh, yes, this is called the McCartney years. Um, so this covers Paul, Car Paul McCartney's whole career. So, yeah, yes. Yeah, I don't see what you're going to do. There you go. There you go, perfect. Um, obviously, the Beatles, one of the first innovators of popular rock and roll music. And this covers this act, husband and wife duo. So they do also the stuff that Paul did with Linda as well. And the Wings portfolio that Paul had. They do the whole, the whole span, so 
early rock and roll, and we'll get we'll get even earlier than that as well. <laughs> if you don't want if you don't want electric guitar, we have some some that are more more, more your speed. Um, this is a this is a great sh show. I'm really really excited about what this one because. Paul McCartney's portfolio is massive if yeah. you just do the Beatles and then you include his solo work and stuff with Wings. They just put a second day out in Boston. Oh, did he's, he really? At, at, at Red, the Red the Fenway. Fenway. So, so yeah. yeah. Those, shows, so, those shows are fun, but they get so hot. <laughs> they're very close to each other. Exactly. Yeah, I love going to a Red Sox game in, in spirit, but then I get there and my body is not as happy when I leave. <laughs> All right. Next up, I, I, I like the Doobie Brothers, but this is, again, this is rock and roll, so this is one that's happening in August. Um, Doobie Brothers have a lot of popular rock and roll songs. Um, they've won lots of Grammy Awards. The part about this one I love, other than the band, because the Doobie Brothers tribute, um, taking it to the streets, is very, very talented. It's, it's in Plymouth, and it's at one of our cooler venues, uh, the Flying Monkey. Uh, yes, monkeys do fly, um, which is a, a little bit more of an intimate menu, venue for us, so it's not as crazy and crowded as, or large as some of our other venues. You feel more personal connection with the performers on stage. And also the meal for this one is at uh, the Common Man Inn, which just as a venue at, it, at, it, at it, its own is really, really beautiful. It's an old restored, uh, used to be a mill. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. It's like a boutique hotel with a value restaurant, value hotel. is amazing. And then the added perk of getting to go to the Common Man Inn and seeing it um, really makes you feel like you're in the woods in New Hampshire vibe that you want um, in the summertime. Next up, he's a little more recent, but his song stylings oh, of Michael Bublé. That's <laughs> more your speed. Yeah, yeah that's okay. That's okay. fine. <laughs> so, no, Led Zeppelin's next. No, I'm kidding. Um, Shades of... I like him. I yeah, like yeah. So this is the music of Michael Blades. It's all these, all these three gentlemen. Um, are all Michael <coughs> Bublé inspired singers. Mm. It's the number one Michael Bu Bublé tribute show. Michael Bublé being an artist that covers songs from generations and generations. He has stuff, as we said, more your speed. And he also does some more modern stuff, some riffs on some more modern songs. Mm. But absolutely great act. And again, this is the, the number one Bublé tribute act. That's going to be in September. Um, that'll be down. Uh, most of these other ones that I'll be speaking of are in Danvers. So again, you guys are in a really good location for Castleton and for Danvers and just getting up to Plymouth too. And of course, Dave has the shovel that takes you there, so you guys have a lot of convenience um, from getting to the shows. Uh, yes, this is going to be this is going to be a little more up to. I promise. I promise the next one's going to be more more your space. I promise. Um, this is the number one share tribute act in the country. That is the performer. That is not share. So when I first saw that, I'm like, oh, why do we have a photo of share there? What don't we want the artist? That's the artist. So she really takes her time in transforming into Cher, both vocally and physically. Lots of costume changes, big extravagant production. That's going to be in November uh, and Danvers. I personally like, like Cher. A lot of the men really like this show. I have no idea why. <laughs> uh, Is this it's related to, I mean, um, we're going to see Cher up in the Agonfer Playhouse. Is it late, related to those? Nope, no, that's a different Cher. Different Cher. Is it, a, is, it that a, is that a tribute show or is that like a musical about it's a tribute, it's a tribute. I believe. Yeah, not yeah. the same not even close okay Lisa McClowry she is the <clears throat> by far she's the number one tribute artist to share in the country uh -huh. um, beats anybody out there she has done his legends in concert she's performed in Las Vegas Atlantic City she's done the major shows as share uh, and hailed as being the number one tribute artist to share okay. in the entire country. Yeah, and again, Thank you. you are so welcome. Now we get into the holidays. I'm really hoping that this year's holidays feel more like the holidays, and we want to have an event that feels like the holidays, so we're doing Christmas with Paul Anka. It's a Paul Anka tribute show uh, with Lou Volano, and this, again, he's going to be doing songs from Paul Lincoln's portfolio, but also many of the Christmas songs that we know and love, and that in December we want to hear, we want to feel togetherness, um, and that's going to be a great show, I think. Again, kind of more your speed. Um, as far as not rock and roll, this one, again, um, is in Danvers. So, again, really close, really convenient. Yeah, it's nice that they're so close. Yeah, you guys are super, like, for the shows that we put on. Again, all of these shows that we put on, 
we are the producers. We're the ones who are both Ticketmaster and the event space. So we rent the space, we hire the act, we bring it in, the shows are produced by us. It's not like if we were taking you to the Algonquin Playhouse, they put on great shows, but obviously they put on the shows themselves. We are putting on these performances, we are hiring these actors. So exclusive through us. All right, that's the day trips. Ran through them quickly, because they're just acts. You get lunch and show, you go see the, the act, you come home. Easy peasy. Now we're going to get into some of the overnights. I have a question. Sure, of course. Are all of your day trips um, a 14 passenger? With, 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 with Exeter, with yeah. It's, okay. He's taking the shuttle to all of them. Okay. Yeah, kind of answer that. So what David has done a great job is he's really wanted to make sure that uh, the pricing stays as low as possible for yeah. the community. Um, so one of the things he's done is made available the shuttle that's here as part of the recreation mm -hmm. department to take folks down. So to your point, the challenging part, the only challenging part that we have is those programs can fill up incredibly fast because it's a limited number of seats. Uh, to kind of give you an idea from perspective of what we at Best of Times Travel do, is we offer in a given year almost a hundred unique programs every calendar year. Um, so you can imagine the difficulty that David has of trying to look through a hundred different programs and figure out which ones are going to be the most appealing to you know, everybody here in town. So he really takes time, combs through it, tries to figure out what are going to be the best programs. Um, and I know David, one of the things I love about David is he's, he's always very receptive that if you have ideas or thoughts of other programs that you want to do, you can let him know. Traditionally, the way that we get people to our programs, other than here, uh, is we do offer motor coach transportation. So if there's a program that uh, David cannot do because the, the van is unavailable, uh, that doesn't mean that we wouldn't be able to get you on the program. We could put you on the bus with other people that we have coming. Um, in certain circumstances, there are enough people from here in Exeter that want to do that program. We'll pick you up here in Exeter. Um, if there weren't, let's say there were only two of you that wanted to go see something else. And let's say it was, for instance, the SHARE program. The only two of you wanted to go. And David says, look, I can't run the van for just two people. Uh, doesn't mean that we couldn't get you on the program. The price might be a little higher because we're going to put you on a full-size motor coach. Has bathroom and TVs and everything else. Um, but, you know, that may be a scenario to just two of you. We might say, hey, could you get on at the uh, Hampton Park and Ride or the Portsmouth Park Park and Ride, something of that nature of where the bus is already traveling. Uh, and I used this expression the other day, day. I'll be interested to know if David knows where the expression comes from. I'm starting to date myself. So <laughs> I've been doing this a very long time. Um, but I said, you know, I said to somebody else the other day, I said, well, we don't want the bus to become a milk run. <clears throat> I think all of you know what a milk run is, right? <clears throat> Please tell me that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is, I was, Do you I was know there, what a milk run know. is? Would that be the milkman? The milkman, yeah. very good. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I think I so stop that's stop very stop good. Stop yeah. stop. So, yeah, so we try not to make the bus into a milk run or making multiple stops along the way. We want it to be convenient. But David's kind of taken. Now I get it. Yeah, but David has kind of taken that yeah, no, no, piece of it, of it out of it because he's provided and made the rec van available to get you from here to the venue with no other stops because you're just on his van um, so you have that capability but with that being said with a lot of interest um, and a limited number of seats registration early is key to being able to do that and I can explain and we can explain our our uh, cancellation policies but they're so convenient and so customer friendly, there's no reason to not sign up early. Because I know Kevin's gonna talk about Country Christmas and I'll talk about the Bermuda. I, one of the things that will always drive me crazy, I can't tell you how many times we do this, and somebody comes up to me and they go, you know, young man, and I'm like, they start not saying that quite as often <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but they'll look at me and say, you know, I'm just not sure if I'm gonna be alive then, you know, when that goes. And I kind of look at it and go, well, just so that you know, our cancel 
insulation policies are so good and so flexible that for some crazy reason your premonition comes true, um, guess what? Your kids will definitely get that money back. So you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, so again, you'll like our cancellation policy. But I'll, I'll let Kevin keep on going. But yes, you are correct. It is from here. If there are other things, again, Ke David cannot do you know, 100 programs in a year. So if there are other things that you see that you want to do, let David know and he'll work with our office and we'll work with him to try to figure out a way to get you folks on there so long as ultimately it's convenient for you. And that's one of the things we're always cognizant of is if we're going to do something, we're going to get you on a trip, we want to make sure it works for you as well as it does for David or for us. So, okay. Come All right, on. so for the next trip, which is Nash a Nashville country Christmas, um, the stars have kind of aligned for this one this year because Kevin uh, and Best of Times, we have Best of Times, have really been trying to book a particular act for years and years, um, which is Vince Gill and Amy Grant, who it just seemed like we were never able to get there at the same time. This year, finally, we're going to go and we're going to be able to see that show as well as the Oak Ridge Boys. So let me just say everything that gets included. So. We are going on a four-day, three-night package. We're staying at the Grand Opryland Resort. So it's right, actually owned by the Marriott. So the quality of the resort is amazing. It's an indoor water park. At this time of year, there's hundreds of different Christmas trees. Um, one of the parts that I'm most excited about seeing is they have a, a whole area that's all for ice sculptures, carved ice. You gotta put on a jacket to go inside. So a real Christmas wonderland that the resort we're staying at is turned into um, and during the trip as well as being provided with all your meals um, you uh, are going to have some time on your own to explore the resort and I highly recommend it especially if you like the internet feel free to check out online it's absolutely stunning beautiful so just where we're staying alone is gorgeous and then we're going to get to do stuff like see Vince Gill and Amy Grant um, have an exclusive dinner show um, and also see another act called the Oak Ridge Boys um, we're also gonna to go to the Ryman Auditorium. Does anybody know about the Ryman Auditorium? Mm -hmm. So basically where country music was born um, is in the Ryman Auditorium. They actually took um, the, set, the circle, about a six foot circle from the Ryman stage, which is where all of the original country music artists performed as they kind of moved on from there to the Country Music Hall of Fame and the Grand Opryland Center. They took the little bit of stage where all these country music stars were made at the Ryman and they moved it elsewhere. So it's a very significant place for country music and we're gonna country music exactly but because this is such a Christmas event like I'll admit it I said this to Kevin I'm not crazy about country music I'm super excited about this trip a Vince Gill and Amy, Amy Grant they kind of have a style that appeals to, yeah. to all, all generations they have more of a, a modern style almost more of a folk style they can both really sing they absolutely can so like the quality of that act I'm super super excited for but again just the the feel the character of the resort um, and the whole experience is super, super exciting. Um, aren't there cards on this floor? There should be. Yep, oh, so is there a I'll get page? you the price. Huh? It should be, I believe it's two. Oh, so 2100. Mm -hmm. 20, yeah, 2100, yeah. And, yeah, Thank she found um, it. There was a second page, that's why. Um, but yes, yeah, so you get three nights at the resort, and again, just the resort itself. I, I keep coming back to this, but just take a look. Absolutely phenomenally beautiful at the Opera Land itself. The experience I talked about is called Ice. Again, every year they'll do like a theme. So some years they've done a Charlie Brown Christmas and they'll have, you know, ice sculptures everywhere in this huge cavernous facility that you walk through. They keep it cold so that not every, nothing melts and the detail, the level of work on those is absolutely phenomenal. Super excited to see them. Um, we'll also be going to the Wild Horse Saloon and also included on this trip is a riverboat cruise to the, G the General Jackson, which is a famous um, riverboat. We're gonna be going on a brunch cruise of that as well. So again, it's a real country experience. It's a real Christmas experience. We fly right out of Boston to, to Nashville and we stay in the heart of it. So this is really a great trip where you get to get the Nashville experience and you get to do some tours like the General Jackson country music every day, <laughs> but some quality country music that we're really just yeah. excited about, especially the act. Again, Vince Gill and Amy Grant, yeah. just super Oak excited. Ridge Boys. Oak Ridge Boys too. Yeah, Oak Ridge Boys, the reason I just called it, I'm not as funny, I, I, even I knew Vince Gill. 
Like, and I was like, oh wow, we're gonna get to see them. So yeah, but er everybody knows the Oak, Oak Ridge Boys. Everybody knows the song yeah. Elvira. Yeah. yeah. You gotta have to be, you know Elvira, yeah. right? Uh, they, oh, that, that's why I'm like, oh no! <laughs> you folks need to t teach this. I could say, yeah. teach this young man a little bit about some music. <laughs> Before you change that slide, sure. On that seven meals, you're only identifying six. Is there, is there, is there one on one on their own? Uh, yes, yeah, so, you're right. It says only six. So uh, there are <laughs> it only seven. There's so no dust have, on uh, you, bud. <laughs> you starve. <laughs> yeah, dinner on your Friday night. Dinner on Saturday night. Dinner on Monday night. Yeah. Um, you have your uh, Sunday brunch, you have breakfast of three mornings. So you have your breakfast. Oh, you have three breakfasts. Three breakfasts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so it's just short, short of breakfast. And again, I, I cannot express to you just where you're staying, take the time to relax and yeah. absolutely oh, enjoy. It's so fun. Yeah, that one's going to be super exciting. It's more of it again. Country Music Hall of Fame. Yeah. Visit this tour of the historic Studio B. That's again the Ryman and Studio B both together um, kind of became the places where country music was born. Right. Um, country music was born in a barn. It's true. Absolutely it was. Yeah. yeah. It was born in someone's backyards on someone's porch yeah. on a summer night. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very fun. It's absolutely fun. So guided tour of Nashville. So this one we will say, you know, there are, there are some of our trips that, like the lunch and show programs, if you tend to use a walker, it's fine. You go see the show, you sit down, you have lunch, you watch it come up. This, particularly just because of the part where we're walking around a little bit in Nashville, you might, you know, want to rent a wheelchair if you if you rely on a walker for everything. If you're if you're just with a cane, you'll be fine. Your question. Are tips included with the meals? Yes, yeah, so for any of the meals, all of your tax and gratuity is included as part of that. So that's all built in. Um, what we do on one of the nights, I will tell you though, it's a, it's kind of a yes and it's kind of a no. Um, and part of that is because on one of the nights when we're at Gaylord Opryland, because they have multiple restaurants at the venue, so we actually give you a gift card. It's a, a gift card that has a dollar amount on it. That way you can go and you can choose what restaurant you want. Um, and in doing that, then you can use it towards you know, the bill. So you, you can cover it. Um, but if you go to uh, Jefferson's, which is their steakhouse, and you ordered the $150 porterhouse steak, I can tell you your gift card will not cover that. <laughs> um, so, but we give you that flexibility. So it's a really nice program because it gives you that ability, as Kevin mentioned a few times, in terms of enjoying the property itself, because Gaylord Opryland is such a unique uh, destination mm -hmm. in and of itself. Uh, so most people, they think of it as just a hotel. Gaylord Opryland is so much more of that. The history of Gaylord Opryland, just kind of a little bit in that without getting into too detail, <coughs> is that actually everybody here has heard of Disney, correct? Yeah. Okay, you, and they have one out in the West and they have one down in Florida, right? One out in California, one in Florida. Well, the idea originally when Gaylord Opryland was built, that whole property was going to be a big amusement park it was going to be and become and they actually had it for a while back in the early mid, I want to say mid to late 60s they actually had a whole amusement park there it was going to be the Disneyland for the middle of the country okay because think back in those times you know not everybody was getting on a flight you know, yeah. all the time. It was more about driving everywhere. So they had this great grand idea of building an incredible resort at a credible property that had the aspect of becoming the next Disney for the middle of the country. And they started to see that. Um, it kind of, things went a little crazy and didn't quite materialize. The hotel went into a little disrepair for a little bit, but then they grew it back into the grand resort that it is today. And it is absolutely amazing. So it's a great destination destination in and of itself and so we make sure in this program while we keep you incredibly busy doing a backstage tour of the Opry House so you're walking through where all of today's and even yesterday's performers of country music have come and gone and sit in the same rooms where they've been you go into the dressing rooms you see where all of that is so you get the backstage <laughs> tour of the Opry House you get a backstage tour of the op of the Ryman which is the mother of country music uh, which really started out as a church 
Um, so that's why it's called the Mother Church of Country Music. Uh, mm -hmm. Then also you have Historic Studio B. Most everybody has heard of that. If you haven't heard of it or you think you've heard of it, well, probably the most famous person that went through Historic Studio B is Elvis Presley. That's who really put it on the map. Uh, he came from Memphis, decided to go to Nashville and record in Nashville because of Studio B and produce hundreds of number one hits from out of Studio B. And we also see do an actual tour of the Country Music Hall of Fame. We do a riding guided tour of Nashville itself. So you're gonna do the Opry House, you're gonna do the Ryman, you're gonna do Studio B, you're gonna do the Country Music Hall of Fame, you're gonna see Nashville itself. And that's just the touring, not to mention, as Kevin mentioned, all the shows. So you're gonna see the Oak Ridge Boys live. You're going to see Vince Gill and Amy Grant live. You're going to see a show on the General Jackson Showboat. That's why it's called a showboat. Mm -hmm. So you actually go down the river, down towards Nashville and come back up. Um, so you have that. And as Kevin mentioned with Ice, which is very good. He's just learning it for the first time. But if you've never experienced Ice there, it's Super really thing. cool. They bring in over 3 million pounds of ice and over 30 sculptors come in and carve it all out by hand it's absolutely amazing they do an incredible nativity sit, set at the end that's all done in ice it's absolutely amazing but to go through you have to wear their special jacket because the room is kept at a temperature of negative 20 degrees well so gotcha. in the show at the opry and it's right and also have the show at the grand Ole opry itself if you've never been to grand Ole opry you've never seen a show there it's a very unique experience in itself you never know really who the entertainers are you can't look now and find out it doesn't exist yeah, um, doesn't. you'll see the date exists but you will have no idea what the entertainers are usually about two weeks out three weeks out they actually announce who the entertainers are what I love about it is even if you you're somebody like Kevin this Kevin who doesn't <laughs> like country music versus if you're this Kevin who, who loves country music hmm. and I would love to wear your hat because I love your hat, by the way. <laughs> so, um, you know, my wife says I can't wear my cowboy hats around town, so it's it's not allowed. She goes, "You're not you're you're not in the South. You're not allowed to wear a cowboy hat." And I said, "Of course I can if I want." She, I don't get to wear them. Um, so, but uh, the nice part about the Grand Ole Opry is they bring in not they bring in some old country, right? Some old stuff that you know. They bring in some called middle of the road country that you know and then they usually have a brand new artist somebody's just up and coming so you get a little bit of all of it um, which is absolutely a blast to see you get a real good mix of what country is all about these days and that's the show that you get at the Green Bell Opry. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Is the guided tour is that a walking tour or a riding tour? Riding. Yeah. yeah. So. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have some plants in the audience. Actually, we're going on to Boston and Bermuda. Kevin, you want to take over for that? Sure. Yeah. So before if I slide into this, are any Insurance. questions that, about the Nashville Country Christmas at this point? No? Sounds wonderful. Okay. Is anybody going to fall asleep? <laughs> no? Okay. Coffee. If you are, I'm going to make some noise and wake you up. So I'm going to talk about our Boston and Bermuda cruise. I'm going to take over at this point. We'll answer some questions at the end. One of the things to note, uh, both with the National Country Christmas and with this, and there are some brochures back there, is the Chubb Travel Insurance. So that is an option. I would definitely highly recommend that if you are going to take the program, you take out the traveler's insurance. It's an important component. covers you for everything that's going to happen happen could happen prior to going which would be injury sickness death it covers those three things uh, to you your traveling companion or to me a family member that is so disabling that the doctor tells you you cannot go on the trip so if any of those things happen you can't go doctor says you can't go you can file an insurance claim you're going to get your money back okay makes life really easy on everybody it also has a ton of benefits in terms of when you're on the trip itself if something gets delayed uh, if luggage gets lost if you have a medical issue while you're out there any of those types of things the insurance is going to cover it pick it up take care of it uh, if you for instance let's say something happens um, I can't I've been doing this for 21 years so I've seen all kinds of crazy things 
Um, so if something happens and you have to stay behind because you need to stay in a hospital for a couple legs because you know they don't want you flying because you got a bad cut on the leg, you know whatever. That insurance is going to pick all that stuff up. So it's a really great program to have. Yes, ma'am. What about for COVID? For yeah. COVID? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, very simple answer to that. So COVID is considered to be an infectious disease just like the flu, just like any other infectious disease. So that is, that is the realm of what is COVID is, and that's exactly how the insurance companies cover COVID. So just like the, if you were to get the flu and anything happened with that, it's covered. If you get COVID and you have those, oh, that's covered. Right. Yeah. I really mean more about the, the situation of COVID, the numbers, if, if the risk is high at that time, um, it's you know advised not to travel or something like that. So uh, it's covered. Yeah, so it's covered just like an infectious disease, just like the flu or anything like that. So it does not cover government shutdowns or uh, something where where you are told by another entity other than a doctor that you cannot go. So again, if you if you have COVID or you have a scenario and your doctor has said that you are unfit for travel. That is one thing. So doctor says you're unfit for travel, just like flu or any other infectious sure. disease. That is one thing. If you say, oh, uh, there are 10 more cases in Nashville than there were yesterday, and I think I personally am not comfortable uh, going, that's a personal decision. Right. That's not a medical, okay. that is a personal decision. Right. So, that, so is that is not covered. So insurance is not a, I change my yeah. mind yeah. that I want to go. It covers injury, sickness, or death. So and what, just, what, I don't know, what if the situation is so bad that travel is banned or something like it that? It does not cover, so the insurance does not oh. cover um, a scenario where it's a government shutdown, mm -hmm. the program that we offer. Uh -huh. You do not have to, that's why it's considered optional. Mm -hmm. So it's an optional insurance program that, that we make available to our guests at an incredibly reasonable rate that offers a ton of protection. Mm -hmm. If that program is not does not fit your personal needs, there are plenty of insurance programs out there on the market that open market that you can purchase to provide you you know i can cancel for any reason doesn't matter i just wake up you know rolled over today and said i just don't want to go there are programs that do that you pay a lot more money than what the program is that, that we offer but they are available to you that again that's why we offer it as an option so um, we make it available as a service to our customers to give them that protection but by no means do you have to buy our insurance program that we offer through Chubb Travel Protection and Chubb, Chubb, uh, Chubb Travel is ACE Group. They're on the stock exchange, they're a major company, fabulous company to work with. They're absolutely terrific, but not every, you know, you know, kind of all kinds of, People have all kinds of different flavors, different taste buds, mm -hmm. you know, so something may work for one, okay. but not for another. Okay. okay. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. So if the government closes down yep. and says Stay no home. more travel to the yep. cruise lines, yep. are you saying that it doesn't make any difference that you, you, you lose your deposit or you lose your mm -hmm. full amount? or do you credit that for another time? Yep, so from our end as a company for Best of Times Travel, we are beholden to the policies of the suppliers of services for any program that we do. So we don't own, I, as a company, my wife and I, I'm a 50% owner. We're, we're a corporation. I have 50% of the shares. My wife has the other 50% of the shares. Ask anybody, she's the boss. Um, it's just kind of how it goes. But um, with that, you know, we don't own a cruise line. We don't own a cruise ship. So if the cruise line has to shut down, if the government comes in and shuts down the cruise line, we're beholden to the policies of the suppliers of services, which in that case would be the cruise line. So if the cruise line is giving back uh, future travel credits, we're passing all of that on to our customer, those travel credits. So we're beholden to what their policies are. Because once we've paid them, so a lot of people think that, that you know, you pay us $100, 
that I just walk off with that hundred dollars and I stick it in my pot and go, thank you, that was a great day, I did my job, I'm done. It's not done that way. We do is we actually, that hundred dollars that you've given us has been passed on to the supplier. It's been passed on to cover the reservation that we're making on your behalf. Um, so you are correct. Now, again, if you don't want to purchase the Chubb insurance that we have, you can purchase from the cruise line directly. They actually have an insurance program that allows you to cancel for any reason, no matter what, and yes, you'll get your money back. Okay, it's not it's not 100%. They offer one that gives you either 70% back or 90% back. There are different price ranges. Mm -hmm. So again, you want to look at it and make sure you're pro providing the coverage that is comfortable for you. Okay, so but if the, in general, if the government comes in, this is, and I don't care what companies out there, they're all in the same boat. That's not just exclusive to best of times travel. This is an industry. Uh, it became the industry problem of travel in general, which unfortunately put hundreds of thousands of travel companies out of business in the perspective of that all of a sudden, us, they have no money coming in, but also all the money that they've spent out on everybody else's behalf, and people were looking for those credits. So what we've done, and we've been very fortunate because of the vendors and our longstanding relationship for over 48 years of being in business with our suppliers, we've been able to recoup those monies most of the time in the form of a travel credit versus an actual refund. Uh, for instance, again, we couldn't push, I mean, we're a big company, but we're not that big, uh, so we couldn't push the cruise lines around. You know, the, every cruise line out there gave, you know, future travel credits to everyone, and so us, we pass that along. Um, so that's essentially how that works. But again, if you want to get something that covers you, no matter what reason, you absolutely have that option. It just wouldn't be the program that we offer, okay, for insurance. Okay, is that good for everybody? And it probably costs more than you would. Oh, yeah. Oh, it costs a sure. lot more. It'll cost two to three times what our. Just so canceling is not a discretionary thing. It takes. It's not discretionary. The program that we offer is not a just change for any reason. It's injury, sickness, or heaven forbid, death. It covers, I mean, it covers other things. I mean, for most part, none of our people here are going to be going into active military duty. Um, but it covers that. Like, if you get called into active military duty, it'll cover that stuff. Um, but I cover the three majors for, for our clientele. Um, so, but again, there are plenty of other programs and products out there. So what I love about this, I'm going to kind of go into, I'll try to keep this relatively quick, but I do want to be comprehensive. Out of curiosity, who here has been on a cruise ship before? Most have. How many here have been on Norwegian Cruise Line? I don't know. Okay, half? Okay, so, um, so this program is going to be with Norwegian Cruise Line. It's our Boston to Bermuda Cruise. What's very different about this, you can see right up there, it's with the Sicilian Tenors. Who has seen the Sicilian Tenors other than David and myself? A couple, okay. Uh, they are fabulous. If you haven't seen them yet, keep your eye open on PBS because they have done their PBS special. They have another one coming out soon, which will be a Christmas special. They're absolutely fabulous. They are, they are the Sicilian tenors. They are a national act. They tour nationally. Um, the really, really cool part about this program is you're getting the combination of a Norwegian cruise line, Boston to Bermuda Cruise, along with was exclusive to us to Best of Times Travel, and that's having the Sicilian tenors on board. You'll be getting three exclusive shows. This one is the important part that nobody else on nobody else on the cruise line will be able to see. They are for our guests and our guests only. And I can tell you the last time we did an exclusive show and we had it on there, I can't tell you how many we had. We literally had security. We hire security from the cruise line to stand at the door and say, okay, are you with Best of Times Travel? I'm not going to give away the secret, but we had a way that they could know it was just our people. And if they couldn't produce what they needed to to be able to get in, they weren't allowed. And I can't tell you 
the hundreds of people that they turned away. We even had a few people, so I'm gonna warn you ahead of time, because we had a few people the last time we did a cruise like this that thought they would be really smart. <laughs> and they said, I can save $25 if I call the cruise line themselves and I can go on this trip. And I said, you're right, you can save $25. I said, but you are not going to see the shows, three of them. You're not gonna have the cocktail parties and you're not gonna have all the fun that are exclusive to us. And they said, oh, I, no, but I'll be able to get in because I know when you're on a cruise line, you can go and see any of the shows. And I had to politely, I tried the nicest place way I could to say, I, I just need to tell you that my answer is, no, you won't be able to. Um, said, okay, no, I, I know what I'm doing. No problem. <laughs> Guess what happens when she gets on the cruise? She comes up to me and says, I want to go in and see the show. I said, but ma'am, you, you didn't sign up with us. And I know, but I spoke to you and you told me the shows were happening. I said, yes, you're right. I told you the shows would be on there. She said, and I want to come in. I said, but you went, didn't book that through us. You went to the cruise lines. Because well, yeah, because they were less expensive. I said, and there was a reason why. Because <laughs> you don't get this. Um, so, but here's the really great part that I will tell you, and one of the things that I recommend, and remember when I said space is limited, okay? So David has done a wonderful job, and he said, look, I'm gonna get the price down a little bit for my folks, we're gonna make the van available here, and we're gonna shuttle them down, okay? So, with that in mind, I think, did, did you say it was, you thought you could do 12 on there with the luggage? Yeah, probably 12 to 14. Tw okay, we'll, we'll call it 12 yeah. for now. Um, so there are only about 12 seats that to be able to get people on. And if we go beyond that, then we'll talk and try to figure something out to get them there. Um, but what you're getting with this program, I shouldn't shut it off. No, I'm, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. <laughs> so what you're getting, with this program, just to be honest with you, uh, because this program got kicked, now what I mean by that is it was originally scheduled for 2020, couldn't do it in 2021, right? Because the cruise lines weren't operating. Contractually, our price that we have for this program is now older pricing. So you are getting the advantage of pricing that was more than done more than a year ago versus what today's pricing is so if you're going off you can try to compare I, fine, whoops fine be happy to do it if you want to do that but i'll tell you for what you're getting for our package if you try to go and build all of that back in yourself i guarantee you'll end up paying more for this cruise without the sicilian tenors than if you were to do it with the Sicilian tenors, okay? Uh, so again, and I, again, I'll move through this a little quicker, but what I love about this, there's seven free values that are in this. It's over $1,500 in value. You have free open bar, okay? Alcoholic or non-alcoholic, that's fine. If you don't drink alcohol, nobody's gonna make you, um, but it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic. You get free excursions, so there's a credit for each day while you're in Bermuda and the day that we're up in Bar Harbor, you have a cruise, you have a credit if you decide to buy the shore excursion through the ship. We have free specialty dining, three nights of specialty dining. I'll explain that in a minute. You get some onboard credit, you'll have that included. You have the three free exclusive shows that are just with the Sicilian tenors. All of your gratuities, your shipboard gratuities, are prepaid and included okay all those gratuities are already done and then you also get a free Wi-Fi package now I will say with a Wi-Fi package you're not going to get on to be able to, to be online 24 7 um, it's not so they give you a certain number of minutes but I think most everybody when you get to Bermuda you're probably gonna get off the ship and want to go in town anyway okay so uh, you have that available okay so uh, I'm not going to go into all, all, all of this. I'm going to kind of skip over that for a second. I'll kind of give you the highlights. Okay. Are you going so, to cover the itinerary as far as yep. the time spent? I'm going to cover all that in just a second. So again, okay, what's included in the package? The round trip transfer to the pier. The best part, 
I'm not, uh, uh, please don't, I'm not being snide or sarcastic or anything like that. We are going out of Boston, so there is no flying necessary, okay? Um, I've, literally, I've literally had somebody who have to fly, like, no, we're, we're close enough. We'll go down and be transported down there. Um, so yeah, we're going out of Boston. So easy, and it's round trip, okay? Uh, it's eight day, seven night cruise on the NCL Pearl. You have the onboard gratuities, you have the open bar, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, specialty restaurants, dining package, the $50 per person onboard credit. Then you have the Wi-Fi package, short excursion credit. Again, the three exclusive shows. When we do that, we kind of go all out. We have hors d'oeuvres, we have drinks, we have everything, and they're exclusive to us. And we open up the dance floor. Everybody can dance and have a lot of fun. The Sicilian tenors, so that you know, you know, they they do multiple shows. So they'll have. I mean, they have big voices. They're tenors, right? But they're not. Some tenors, I know, if you've gone to see them, about halfway through the show, you can sometimes do. <laughs> <laughs> right? I've seen them before. I know who they are. The Sicilian tenors are nothing like that. But they actually, their voices are so good that they do is they actually do a mix of some shows. So they'll do more of their traditional tenor stuff, but then they actually do a whole nother show, which is kind of more that 50s, 60s and 70s rock and roll kind of stuff. Um, it's a really great perk. So you'll get the three different shows. You do have a best of times travel tour director. So somebody from our company will be on the program the entire time and be there at your service if you need assistance with things. Uh, obviously, cover the driver gr gratuity. So, you know, I think David's built in like $80 per person, to, you know, for him driving. Not a single laugh on that. Did that just go over everybody's <laughs> head? Holy mackerel. Okay, uh, as I said, optional. I say optional, I'm gonna mention this again. It's optional yeah. Chubb Travel Insurance, so you can certainly go ahead and purchase something else. Uh, again, the Norwegian Pearl, the Sicilian Tenor. So I'm gonna go on the next slide, it's a little easier to see. Okay, itinerary, here we go. First day, we leave on a Friday. We go out of Boston, leave at 4 p.m. Now, with that being said, we're actually going to get you there. This is one of the things we like to do. We'll get you there before lunch. Okay, when I say before lunch, we're having you pull in about 11.30, 11.45-ish. Okay, we get you on. Your cabins will not be ready, but your bellies and the buffet will be. So we get you on, you get to have some food, get to walk, well, I always say is you can walk around the ship a little bit, kind of get to experience, know what the different decks are, and then you go ahead and you get yourself on in. Because you're not gonna have any your baggage, you're gonna drop your baggage off and they're gonna, they're gonna put that into your cabin for you. So unless you're one of those people that has to walk around with you know massive bags for some reason, you don't need to, right? It's, it's just gonna show up in your cabin so you can go to free and walk around. So eat, then you have your magical day at sea on that Saturday. That day, by the way, that will be one of the days that we do the shows with the Sicilian tenors. The nice part when we do that is we don't do the Sicilian tenors at a time where, where it interferes with the normal entertainment that's offered through the ship. Okay, so we do that so it all just becomes extra. It's another piece of entertainment. Uh, then on Sunday, we get into the dockyard. I'm not sure if you can see that. It ran out a little space. But we arrive at 10 a.m. We actually stay docked at the Royal Neighbor Dockyard in uh, Bermuda. We, so you have two nights of overnight. You can see here on this Monday, you have an entire day to do as you please and enjoy Bermuda. You have the entire morning of Tuesday on the dockyard. The ship leaves at 4.30. People have asked me, if I get there at 4.35, will the ship leave without me? And I said, you bet you it will. <laughs> so um, so <laughs> they don't wait. Now I will tell you, I have been on some ships where at 4.15, the ship is literally going honk, honk, because they're looking for somebody. Yeah. And I've literally seen a couple of times, I kid you not, somebody was out shopping. She probably had four bags in each arm. And she was just doing this, <laughs> kind of trying to run up the entire gateway, get up and get on the ship and make it on time. Uh, it, 
it was close. Um, so usually they plan to get you back by about an hour. You want to be back about an hour before sailing. Okay, just to give you an idea there. Um, then you have another full day at sea. If you've never cruised before, I will tell you that when you do the days at sea, they are extremely relaxing and very, very enjoyable with a lot to do all day. Then Thursday is Sunday changed up in the itinerary this past year. They'll be going into Bar Harbor, Maine. I assume everybody here has heard of that, correct? Have any of you been there before? Yes. Some of you have not, okay? Uh, Bar Harbor is a great little town to go to. If you're not familiar, Bar Harbor is where Acadia National Park is. Um, that's a trip that we actually run that's not on the cruise. Um, Booth Bay and Bar Harbor, but we go to Bar Harbor, Maine. Uh, that port, so that you know, is a tender port. If you're not familiar with what a tender is, so this is the dockyard, you're docked up, meaning the ship literally comes against the shore, and they tie it all up, and you just walk off. With a tender, what this means is they bring their boats, a bunch of the lifeboats up next to the door that's on the ship. They open it up, they push the, they'll do this, they push the boat and the ship together, you know, the tender and the big ship together, and you step off and step into the tender and they drive you in, okay, uh, via the boat. So that is now how big are these tenders? How, how many people would they carry? Uh, the tenders, what are they licensed to carry is probably about a hundred people a, a tender. Um, they usually probably put about 40, 50, but they're running them all yeah. day long. So um, you know, they usually have 15, 10, 15, 20 of them going. So they're just right. lined up, just pushing people out like crazy. Yes. Kevin, do you choose our rooms or do we choose our own rooms? So I'm going to explain the rooms in a second. You're going to choose, you, you in some way you're choosing what type of room you want. Um, and I'll come back to that. So hold that question because it's a great question. And I want to make sure I answer it thoroughly. Okay. Um, and then you can see here on Friday, we get back into Boston at 8 a.m. I'm going to tell you right now, we're not forcing you to get up at 6 a.m., prim proper, get yourself ready, and shooting you off the boat at 8. We tend to be a little bit later. Usually the disembarkation begins about an hour and a half, two hours after we get in. So your transfer coming home is going to be about 9.30ish, you know, 10 o'clock, somewhere in that range. Okay? So that's the time that you're going to depart to come home. Okay, um, I'm not even going to belabor this. Um, I'll just kind of have it here. Um, so in case you're wondering what Bermuda looks like, ta-da, that's what, it, that's the shape. It's like a hook. Uh, so that's Bermuda itself. Notice some of the beaches on Bermuda. This talks, there are three major ports in Bermuda, Hamilton, Kings Wharf, and St. George's. In your time when you're at Bermuda, you can visit all three. Okay, so you would be visiting it via land. They're not going to take the boat around to all three. You're going to come into King's Wharf. That's where the dock, Rail Naval Dockyard is. That's where you're going to be pulled up. But if you want to go to the other port parts of the island, you can do that. Everybody knows what Bermuda's famous for, right? Yes, Kevin, no, you're right. Um, so it's for their incredible pink sand beaches. And the reason why they get the pink sand beaches, it's because you were going to say, I know you were going to say that. Exactly. It's right in the tip of your tongue. So the pink sand beaches, it's from the, um, the ocean beating up all the shells, the seashells. So they get really, really, really fine. And it's like sand, but they're actually sh seashells. Say that six times without getting messy. Um, but they do that, and that's how you get those beautiful pink sand beaches. And they do, do they look like that? The answer is absolutely, they look like that. And some fabulous beaches. There are so many excursions that you can do. When you get your final packet from us, we kind of give you some suggestions. If you want to do this, you can do that. You can buy a little pass when you get off the ship because they have a trolley that goes around the island. It's an island. You can't, you can somewhat get lost, but. You can't really leave it, so at some point in time you can figure out your way back to where the ship is, um, you know, even if you had to walk the whole thing. But they actually make a shuttle that goes around and it gets off, it's like a hop on, hop off. Right. So you can drive it, you can go to different beaches, go to different stops, go to wherever you want to do. It's all available, they make that as part of the trip. Uh, and then again, visit to Bar Harbor. The big piece here, if you're going to go to Bar Harbor, if you've never been, never done it, you want to go see Acadia National Park. It was home to Rockefellers, all the big tycoons back day. That's what it was John Rockefeller that created Acadia National Park, built all the carriage roads, did all that. It's absolutely amazing. 
I know, I'm trying to talk quick because I know you're starting to get hot and, and ready for me to be done. Okay, a couple of quick pictures of Bermuda. You can see, I like this one. See, pink, pink, pink sand beaches. That's about the, you know, little one there. Uh, okay, there's more of the beach. And it truly does look like that. That is what Bermuda looks like. Okay, about the ship. I'm gonna go through this very quickly for you. It's a 93,000 ton ship. So you say, wow, that's really big. It's actually not. Most of the big ships these days are about 150 to 170,000 tons. Okay, so this is a 93,000 ton ship. She was uh, fully refurbished in 2019. And I want to put that into perspective. So she was redone in 2017. So think about 2017, she was gone. 2018, she was going. 2019, she was going. Oh, 2020 and 21 hasn't had anybody on it. Now we're coming back into 22. So it's still a very new ship because it hasn't been worn and beat on. The passenger capacity is just over 2,000. The crew is over 1,000. Look at that, folks, if that's a two to one. Okay, one, pa one crew to every two people. That's a great ratio of customer service. 15 decks on board the ship, 15 bars and lounges, including the wine cellar, 16 restaurants, cafes, three pools, five hot tubs, library, card room, internet cafe, spa, fitness center, hair and beauty salon. The hair and beauty salon, ladies, I will tell you, if you decide to go do your hair and beauty, do them before you get on the ship. It'll be pretty expensive getting it on the ship. But I will tell you, if you like a massage, the massage is, in my opinion, well worth it. Um, and as it has a cigar bar, a casino, arcade, kids center, a gallery of shops. What I love about doing a cruise, if you ever want to do anything that's multi-generational. What I mean is, let's say mom, daughter, mom, so mom, mom, daughter kind of thing. It's a great option, or even mom, daughter, granddaughter, okay? The ship offers everything for everyone. So um, kind of one of those things that sometimes it's nice for mom and dad. I mean, I could think my daughter's dating myself. 20 this year um <clears throat> so you know I, I, I remember when she was you know little as we all do i think you can probably remember back when your kids were little little there are times you said could i please just get a break um and you can it's a nice part that they actually have a tremendous tremendous kids program on board that the kids can kind of do their own thing and mom's dads get their time and usually what happens is mom and dad say i want you to come back and have them. the kids go no i'm having more fun here see you later um so they really do a nice job but it can be something that's definitely multi-generational and everybody can have that fun and if you're one of those people say boy i really want to do something with my kids but I need a break from them, you know, the adult kids. Um, like I've heard so many times, I'm sure you can think about it, as grandparents, what are the two greatest things you can see when your kids visit? Headlights and then taillights, <laughs> right? You can't wait, you know, after three days, it's like fish, it gets a little old. Um, you know, so it's a great idea where you can go off, everybody can do their own thing, get back for dinners, have some fun, do that. It's, it really is a great way to make a multi-generational trip. Um, okay. Complimentary dining. So I'm gonna explain just real quick the way NCL works. NCL is all about, it's called freestyle dining. The idea that they created, they were the first in the industry to do it. Now everybody out there wants to copy and do exactly what they do. It's called freestyle dining. The idea is it's your vacation, do it the way that you want to do it. Okay, on board ship, do you have to wear a tie? Absolutely not. Do you have to wear a jacket? Absolutely not. Do you have to wear pants when you go into the dining room? You absolutely do. Um, you know, you have to wear clothing, uh, but they're not gonna actually, you know, meaning you can't go like in a bathing suit, you know, into a dining room. You have to, yeah. you know, look smart, casual is kind of the way to, to think of it that way. Um, but they offer different types of dining. They offer complimentary dining. They have main, what they call main dining rooms. Most people, when they think of cruising from years ago, you went, you either had an early seating or you had a late seating. You always sat with the same people every single night. When you got on board, you never knew who it was that you were gonna sit with. I'm, I'm famous, I remember those days. 
Um, and I can literally tell you, I, we have some miserable people in the past that you'd eat with. And you'd be like, do I have to eat with them again? Um, and kind of Norwegian Cruise Line did away with all that. They created the freestyle. So the, the idea is with complimentary dining, they're free dining rooms. They have a set menu every night. It's a full five course meal. And you pick off what you want to eat. No big deal. But you go at your time. You want to eat at 6.15, you go. Think about it. Has anybody here ever been to a, a restaurant out in town? Well, I don't know. Think of, give me a name. Like, Olive Garden or Bertucci's, anything like that? You've heard of those kinds yeah. of things. All right, what do you go when they're busy? What do they give you? Buzzer. A little buzzer, right? Goes, bzz, 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 right, when, when it's your turn. Yeah. They do the same thing here. So if you want to go at 615, if they got space and they got a table available, you're in it. Come on in. If they say, oh no, we're busy, because there are eight of you that want to sit together, then they may say, okay, it's going to take a little bit of time. We're going to give you this little buzzy thing. When the table becomes available, in you go. Um, so you can choose one night, two of you, another night, four of you, or six of you, or eight of you, whatever you want to do. Um, they have that complimentary dining going any time that you want. Then they also have, and I'm going to cover what are called specialty restaurants. They're smaller restaurants, a little bit finer quality of, of food and dining experience. Um, it's a little bit slower pace. I shouldn't say slower pace, but a little more attention to detail, you know, because there are fewer people in the restaurant. Um, and I'll cover what those are. And part of our package, you always have the complimentary dining, but you also have the specialty dining that you can do, okay? And that is included in your package. And the tax and the gratuity that is for that dining, for that specialty dining, as part of our package is already built in. So you're not going to be wackadoodled for that extra amount. Okay, so your complimentary dining options. Okay, I'm going to go through them kind of quickly here. Let me just get down to my last one, and... May I ask, is um, all the dining places, I've cruised before, and there's, there's no exchange of money. So no. But, but, but are other people going to be on there with the same um, program, such and such? So everybody will be getting their stuff free, it's not just us, so there's no time for... Are, like money exchange or anything, everybody on the boat is the same. Everybody on the boat say so nobody ha pays okay. any money. Yeah. Now, I should, let me, ref I'll rephrase that in a second. There's no physical exchange of cash. You're not going to hand a credit card. But what you get when you get on board the ship, they, I mean, they literally they hand you, I don't know if I have one, but they give you a card. It looks yeah. like a credit card, right? They okay. give you a card. That's your cabin key. But that's also how you charge anything that you want to buy. You hand them your card, and they charge it to your cabin. Because before you go, you're going to give the cruise, you're going to sign up, you give the cruise line your credit card number ahead of time. It's, it's, an, it's an account. And you just charge away. Danger, Will Robinson, right? Uh, <laughs> so, you know, you got to be a little careful, mind your P's and Q's there, but what you're going to do is you're going to have that card, and that's how you charge. So other people on board the ship, if they go to a specialty dining restaurant, they're going to have to hand their card over because they have to pay for that specialty dining. Mm -hmm. In your case, for the three nights that we have included, for those three nights that you do that specialty dining, you don't have to pay. And they'll already know that it's taken care of and paid for, okay? So here's your compliment. You have two main dining rooms. Again, that five-course meet, Indigo, Summer Palace. You have a top size bar, the great outdoors are kind of outdoor, more of your buffet or burgers, hot dogs, that type of thing. The Garden Cafe, upstairs on, I think, deck 14. Uh, with that, it's a, a buffet style kind of meal that you can have, very casual, come and go as you want. Uh, then you have Oshian's Neighborhood Bar and Grill. Uh, if you like, uh, uh, easiest way to think of it, English pub food, fish and chips. You ever heard of that? Yeah. Okay, so fish and, if you don't know what chips are, Rise, right? That's what that's what they are over over in uh, Great Britain. So, but you have fish and chips and all the you know uh, pot roast and all the stuff you would think of from. I don't think they have kidney pie. Um, you know, but they have all the stuff you get from England in there. So it's a really good bar. Uh, and I usually if they've got uh, let's see May that time of year. Uh, they'll probably have some of the. Uh, you know, like some of the, the uh, NHL games and stuff like that on in there. They have them on big, huge screens. It's really cool. Obviously, you have your room service as well. Okay, moving on quickly to the specialty dining. I'm going to cover these also. I apologize if I get one 
I miss one there. Okay, so here they all are. So Mod Insurer Sound, just to give you an idea, if you did not pay, have this as part of your free package, to go and eat at that restaurant, it's $49 per person, okay, to eat in that restaurant. Yours, because it's included, that is $49, that's free. Okay, it's all that included. Anybody know what the gaucho is? No, okay, sounds like if you've gone to a Brazilian eateria where they come around, they have the food on a steak and they carve it off at your plate. Right. That is what that restaurant is. Everything from the lamb to the filet mignon to the sirloin to the chicken to the, yeah, it's crazy. I, I actually was telling my daughter about it. I said, man, Raya, you wouldn't believe they have the best the absolute most incredible salad bar ever. And she looked at me, she goes, Dad, you're saying how great the salad bar is when you have filet mignon? I said, okay, you're right. But no, it really <laughs> is great. So, uh, so I do warn you with that because the salad bar is so good that if you eat too much of the salad, then you'll kick yourself because then you won't be able to fit anything else in. Um, the tapenaki, again, that's a $49 per person fee. Anybody know what tapenaki is? Yeah. One person, two people do tapenaki. You ever seen when they have those things and you eat, you sit down, you have the grill in front of you, yeah. and the guy says, go, hot, 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 you know, yeah. just chops it all up and beats it and yeah. throws it all up in the air and everything else. That's the tapenaki. So, great fun restaurant. This is always, always one of the most difficult restaurants to get into because it's very small. Um, so, and there are ways to book it ahead of time. We'll always teach you about that as you get closer. Cagney Steakhouse, great restaurant. That, yes, you can get the porter. This is one where you could get the porterhouse here and it would be fully covered. Okay, it's part of your package. La Chuchina is your Italian restaurant. La Bistro is your French restaurant. And then they actually have a sushi uh, restaurant as well. So you can do any of those, any one of those three nights, with, well, uh, three meals at a specialty restaurant is included in your package. Okay, moving on, bars and lounges. I'm not going to belabor this, but yeah, the Bliss Ultra Lounge, Magnum Champagne and Wine Bar, if you like that. The Sugarcane Mojito Bar. Malting's Beer and Whiskey Bar. If you are somebody that likes beer at all, and you like all kinds of things, that is a great place to go. And in case you can't tell, I like flavorful beer. Um, so I do like that. Stump this too. Um, so uh, we have Moderno Bar, the Saki Bar, and then again, Oshian's Bar and Grill. And then they also have the Java Cafe. Oh, but we're not done, are we? No more of them. So we have this, yes, there is a Starbucks on board. So you can have that. They have an atrium bar, which is really fun. You get to watch all the people. They have a cigar club. Uh, they, so they do at um, Malting, uh, not the uh, Champagne Bar. They'll have, they have a live piano, piano player that plays yeah. up there, yep. Um, Corona Cigar Club, the Great Outdoors Bar, Top Siders Bar and Grill, those will be on the outside. The Pearl Club Casino Bar, nobody ever drinks while they're in a casino, do they? Um, so they have that. This is another one where they also have the pianos, the Shakers Martini and Cocktails Bar. Um, if you like a good martini, that's a great place to go. And here's the really cool thing. So if you're, like, if you're not really a big alcohol drinker, because, uh, you know, eh, I'm, I'm not, right? I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I like to have wine or I like to have a beer, but I'm definitely not a hard alcohol kind of guy. But the thing is, when you don't drink out hard alcohol, wouldn't it be nice to find out what everybody else is raving about? So the nice part is, because all your drinks are free, you can very easily go up and say, you know what, I've never had whatever it is, can you make me one of those? It doesn't cost you a single penny to have whatever that is. And if you have a sip and you absolutely hate it, put it down <laughs> and order something else. Um, we literally, Rebecca and I, we went in one time to a bar. I probably shouldn't say, because I'm alive. I'm, uh, give me a, make sure you edit this out, because I don't want anybody to think <laughs> badly about me. But Rebecca, my wife, and I, when we were on a cruise, we actually went in. <clears throat> now, this is how back crazy we are. Literally went and sat at the bar. We looked at the bar to just like to just kind of have fun, right? Something we never do. We looked and we said, all right, do us a favor. So we don't need full drinks, but serve us what you think are the most disgusting drinks that people order. <laughs> said, they looked and said, what? Said, well, we want to try all the things. You have all these bottles up here. And I see some have this much alcohol in it, 
It's something that have this much alcohol in it. I'm assuming if it has this much alcohol in it, it's because people don't really like it. <clears throat> so, well, they're more distinguished taste. I said, okay, we'll try it. Some of this stuff, bleh, <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> but you can just try fun things like yeah. that, you know, that you wouldn't normally do. Um, so that's just a suggestion. All right, and then it has the Sky High Bar. All right, entertainment on board. Again, they have here Legends in Concert. That's on the Norwegian Pearl. You've got a pure variety show. They have all kinds, kinds of other things, piano bars, singers, you know, nightly entertainment. And obviously, again, our three exclusive shows with, with the Sicilian Tenors. They've been on PBS. They tour nationwide. They've sold out Carnegie Hall multiple times. And again, there are three of those shows that are exclusive to our guests only. Nobody else, I'm truly telling you, nobody else will be able to get into those shows. Okay, going on to the cabins, because you want, you asked about that. So, if you look at the brochure, and we have, uh, in, it's a four-page brochure of that, on the back is the pricing. So I'm going to explain the three types of cabins, and they're based upon different decks. There are probably, no lie, 25 different categories that you could select from. What we've done is we've selected the best of the best at the price point that we could possibly get, okay? So what you have three options. An inside cabin is very simple to explain. <coughs> There's no window, hence reason it's called inside. It is the inside of the ship with no window. You have a door to go out into the hallway, close the door behind you, you have four walls, okay? Uh, they have the, them with single beds. Every cabin, no matter what cabin, these beds split into two, okay. okay? So no matter what cabin you choose, inside, ocean view, or balcony, they all can be two beds. Mm -hmm. Some will have a third or fourth bed capability, and those are done as a bunk bed in on the insides and ocean views. I'll explain the balcony in a second. In terms of an ocean view cabin, again, can be split as two, but what you get is you get a window to look out, look at, okay? I will tell you, it is still way high up. You will not have water going <laughs> over your window, okay? Um, if we do, uh, we we're, we're, we're all like this. <laughs> so, which won't happen. <laughs> Ships just don't do that. Um, so, you're not going to have water, you'll be able to look out. But with those cabins, they tend to be more forward or more aft. Uh, if you're not familiar, that means front of the boat, back of the boat, okay? Um, but we've also selected, so these are, uh, insides are, we've chosen a little bit of a higher deck versus the lower deck. On the ocean views, they only have, they don't have many, so they're forward aft, and on the lower decks, four and five. Then we have balcony cabin. Balcony cabin, if you can hopefully see this, you come in, so if I'm coming this way, I'm walking in the door, I turn my left or right, one of the two sides, you're gonna have your bathroom in there. Then you're gonna walk in, you're gonna have your bedding area. And then, if you look just right here, and you see this like blue thing over here, what that is, that's a sofa bed. Okay, so you have a sofa, which actually has a sitting area. You can see a TV over here. Oh, There's a closet when you come in. Like I said, one side's bathroom, the other side's closet. But over here is a couch. That couch turns into a sofa bed. That's how you get a third into a balcony. Okay, so you get that way. <clears throat> balcony, everybody sees what this is over here. Anybody have a slider at home or ever seen a slider in somebody's home? That's what that is. It's a sliding door. It opens up and you can see they have two chairs and the table out there on the balcony that you can sit at and enjoy and be outdoors. Have a nice cup of coffee in the morning out there or come home, ask your, ask your cabin steward if you want. When you come back, hey, do me a favor. Please have a bottle of champagne here for me or have two glasses of beer waiting for me when I come back or whatever. Yeah. Two sodas. I want to sit out on my balcony and relax. You can do that. Um, I will say, if there are two ladies that are going to share a room, especially a balcony room, I will tell you this because it's going to split in two. Okay? Uh, especially if you have three ladies that are in the room. 
I will tell you, whoever has the strongest bladder is the one that sleeps on the sofa. Because they have to walk around everybody else and wake everybody else up in the room if they're trying to feel, find their way around in the dark. So whoever has the weak bladder, they're the one that gets to sleep next to the near, nearer the bathroom. Um, but it's a great, you know, it, I love the balconies. The balconies that we have, they're category BA. They're more of a midship. So as you can imagine, you know, you, the, the to give you an idea of the balcony BAs, you may have 80 or 90 of those cabins, right? So I'm answering your question now. So with you in that category, you may have 80, 90, 100 of those cabins. Well, they don't all fit 100 cabins directly in the middle of the boat. They go from here to here, right? A little more forward to a little more aft. And then there is absolutely that one cabin on this side of the ship and one cabin on that side of the ship that is 100% dead smack in the middle of the boat. Your chance of getting that one cabin is probably slim to none because you didn't book this cruise two years ago, okay? Um, so be aware of that. But what we try to do when you select a category BA, if you're saying we'd like to be uh, as close to midship as possible, you know, we kind of go, okay, can we get a cabin anywhere between here and here, okay? If you say, I need a cabin that's closer to the stairs of the elevator because I don't want to do a lot of walking, we try to find one that's closer to the elevator or stairs. So we take your guidance and do the best that we can given what we have. Um, so that is the other key component of registering early. When you sign up early, we have more cabins to work with. When you sign up late, everybody else that signed up before you, is, they've sucked up cabins, right? I mean, it's kind of common sense, but a lot of people don't think that. I can't tell you how many people call me you know, a month before the cruise and they say, we want to get on, but we want the cabin that's right in the middle of the ship. I go, really? Um, <clears throat> just not going to happen. So again, it's that signing up early that's so critical so that you have that ability to get the cabin that you want and the category that you want. Are there other categories that we can get a mini suite or this type of thing? Yes, we can. But in doing that, we get it whatever today's rate is. And then we have to add in all the things that are extra that we contracted with ages ago. So the price would definitely be a lot higher. Okay, but we can do those types of things. Can you get rooms that um, are next to each other, across the hall, or that, you know, if you're traveling with multiple people or family members? Yes, we can do all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's all available to us. All right. Whew. Did I wear you out? I know. No, I'm you're, you're doing good. All right. You're Questions good. and answers. So now I'm just opening up to you to ask away. Yes. So on the double double occupancy, if there are three people that are going to share a room. Yep. How is that? So on the price, it's great questions. The pricing that's on the flyer is per person. It is based on double occupancy. So I'm going to answer, I will answer. If you're a single, I'm going to tell you the price is going to be more. It's not quite double, but it's pretty close there too. And if you're a 